Good morning. Now you might have seen the rise of artificial intelligence and AI being used in a lot more scenarios than just in films lately. I'm of the opinion that it is just killing the creative industry, photography, filmmaking, music, all those type of things. And today I'm here in Cullen, I'm gonna take a couple of snaps and I'm gonna just discuss my views, my opinions on the use of AI in the creative industry and why I think it's pretty bad for most of us. Now, please bear in mind that I'm not professional with, with AI. I'm not an expert. I've not spent years of my life dedicated to AI. This is just from my opinions as a creative and from the research that I've done online. So there's a pretty cool boat all the way out there on the sea. I'm gonna try and get a shot of that with the rocks in the foreground. So I need to stay pretty far back so I can get the rocks in. It's a bit too much foreground, I think. And of course, dog walkers in the way. <sighs> there we go, that will do. Now, for anyone who's not seen this rise and not really been on social media or seen any films, AI is basically like a really smart random number generator. But instead of generating numbers, you put in sentences and it will give you an image or a video or a song. But yeah, with regards to photo editing and video editing and the planning of videos, it is, um, yeah, it's quite impressive, but also slightly scary and annoying at the same time. So I've got two points for photography and two points for filmmaking and editing. I'm gonna go through them, discuss my views on them, as I've already said. Yeah, don't know where I was going with this one, really. I swear, if you go right where I wanna take a photo. You're not, there you go, that's good. Or maybe you are. Um, so the first point with regards to photography is the AI autofill, or just AI fill, whichever it is. Basically you select an object in your photo and you type in what you want it to change to and it will change it. You can put it around a jumper and you can change a jumper, you can put it around an eye and if it's closed you can say make it open. Pretty impressive stuff. It's basically like a really advanced version of Photoshop, essentially. I'm a strong advocate for getting it right in camera first time. Although I am, you know, I say guilty of cheating a bit and photoshopping and inpainting and cloning stuff, I do prefer getting it right in camera first time. I know there's some, some things you can't control, but with this, it does does make the ability to take things out and change things a lot easier. I don't really see who it will benefit, apart from those who just really like photoshopping and changing things, changing backgrounds, changing clothing on people. I did have a shoot recently where a band member, the way I was framing, there was five of them, and he was actually wearing, shut up, he was actually wearing a red top where he should have been wearing a pink one to balance it out, and I didn't realize this until after the shoot. So I spent half an hour or so changing his t-shirt to pink. But with this autofill, it would have been so much easier. So yeah, for photoshopping stuff with the AI fill, I can see it being beneficial. But again, it does take the skill out of being able to plan and prepare clothing for the shoot and the contrast in what's being worn, if you understand what I mean. Let's move on. Number two on the AI photography list discussion points is what I'm calling everyone's a photographer, which is basically where you can put in any photo into this generator. And even if it's mega blurry and it is awful quality, it comes out pristine and sharp and in focus. And it basically corrects everything that you've done wrong. One of the best things about photography is the learning points when you take a photo, you spend a while grinding it, but maybe you neglect your focus a little bit, and then you get back, you realize your photo is blurry, that's a learning point, okay, next time I need to spend more time on my focus. And it just goes like that, because no one is ever a perfect photographer. But with this AI generator, corrector, whatever you want to call it, you can basically go out and take tons of crap blurry shots, and then come home, put them in the generator, and suddenly you've got the best photos 
of your life because they've just been pinpoint and sharpened and that's definitely for lazy people who don't like photography as the fun and challenge they want to do it just because they want a perfect photo every time and that's not what it's about <sighs> so yeah I, i'm not a fan of that one too many people can be a photographer purely because their ai can correct their photos and i'd much rather take thousands and thousands and thousands of photos get them wrong learn and move on rather than every time I take a bad shot being able to just five minutes beep, beep, and then suddenly it's a great photo again. Now I've got to figure out how to get out of this temple. I can get out of the temple itself but getting back to Cullen is going to be a bit of an issue. Okay, let's see that list. Let's try one with a car and one without. Now just wait for a car. Yeah, that'll do. That first one's definitely better. So now we're on to the filmmaking, videography, editing side of things. Two topics here. First one is to do with the actual editing of videos and the second one is to do with the writing of videos and the planning of content. So I'm gonna start with the actual editing of videos. Now this one I'm calling the lazy editor because funnily enough, this AI, as you might be able to guess, edits your video for you. From what I can tell from this, it doesn't just do it automatically. You do need to type in a script. You need to type in exactly what you want. But it is a plugin that you can get and it can actually, you know, you type in your script, you sit back and it will just edit your video one step at a time for you. Now, I can see how this would help editors, especially in a rush. But if you're using AI, you're not using your skill for a video. Even if you have written the script, it's not really your skill of editing the video you're just very good at describing what you want to see in a video, which is completely different. I can describe what I want to see in a video, but can I make that a reality? Sometimes that's questionable. I can understand it saving time, but then if you are going to use an AI for commercial work to help you with your editing, then I think you need to charge less because you are doing less work essentially. But yeah, don't, not a fan of that lazy editor AI editing your videos for you. I can see it being useful, but disagree with it completely. So here I'm going to try and get a similar shot to one I got in Port Soy with the boat against the background. But this time there's a lot more there I could utilise. And it's not going to be a long exposure, it's just going to be a snap. So let's see. Okay, so I need even more of it this way. I need to be like right in front of it, which is about here. So I come out a bit to get that ladder in. All right, now I need to put my exposure compensation up. That is way too dark. That's much better. That's nice. So the final thing on the list for AI is to do with the writing of things. And I first saw something about this a year and a half ago on Facebook and it was actually targeted at authors and writers and it was like use AI to write your stories, create your content for you, blah blah blah. And I thought at the time, you know, that's a bit lazy, you know, there's no creativity there. You're literally just asking AI to write ideas for you. And then over over that year and a half and now even to today, there are a lot of people that are that is using AI to write content and to write their stories, to create their thumbnails, to create their titles for YouTube videos and for films. And I, I as, as, as a common theme with today's topic, that is just taking the creativity and the skill and also the challenge out of being a creative, being someone who creates videos, creates photos, because if you are not able to think of those ideas, they're not your ideas, they're AI's ideas and the AI has taken them from someone else. I know you can you know, copy other people's ideas and that's completely fine, 
and put your own twist to it. But if you're taking it directly from AI, you know, you're not doing it yourself. You're, you're not taking the time to research and find out what's best for you. And I think eventually if everyone just keeps relying on AI to write the content, then people who are actually creative, people who have an imagination, you know, and can think of ideas are going to be out of work. They're not going to find fun in what they do anymore. And people that are thick as two short planks, but know how to use AI, are going to suddenly be these really creative people. I say creative and are gonna be making all the content. And, you know, yeah, I could go on, but AI writing your stories for you and writing your content and planning and making your thumbnails for you, it takes the fun, the creativity and the skill out of it. And that has been the main theme throughout today's video. If you rely on AI, you have no skill, basically. I was just about to do my outro and then I saw this photo opportunity. I want to see if I can get the boat in like the same frame in different, I don't know how to explain it, same frame, different areas, looking quite nice, visually pleasing, we'll see. Okay, that's quite nice. Um, now I want to see if I can get it, but with a wider aperture, maybe F22, F20. No, that is still, F29, my God, I didn't realize it actually went that high up. Yeah, that'll do. Not the best. Um, no, that's not too bad. That one's awful. That one's better. There we go, lovely. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the shots from Cullen and also hearing my opinions on AI and what I think of it with regards to creativity. Now, obviously AI is not perfect. There are a couple of videos I've seen where AI has done the wrong thing and just completely messed up someone's photo, um, which is important to remember. It's not perfect. It's not gonna take over the world yet, but you never know what happens in the future where it keeps improving. Something that I'm not gonna touch on is with regards to music and the creation of music because I'm not a musician and I don't wanna speak on behalf of an artist. However, what I will say is that AI has been used recently to search for music, which I think is pretty useful. But when it comes to the actual AI generating of music, I think that is bad news for a lot of music artists. And yeah, that might put them out of work fairly soon. But I am happy that AI can help you search for music, give you a better search engine basically. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Let me know your thoughts on AI and let me know your favorite photo if you like as well. And I am finishing bang on time and I will see you in the next one.